Hi everyone, uh, good morning. Today is 25th of January and welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis discussion. Okay guys, uh, so today we are a little bit late and as uh, I was not feeling well since last night. So <coughs> because of that, we are a little bit late today. Apologies for that. Okay guys, so let's start with the video for the today. Okay, um, so in the today's class, we are going to discuss entire analysis of Hindu newspaper will discuss all the articles and I would like to tell you that you can also download the explainer notes of this particular session from our telegram channel and the link for telegram channel is given in description box in YouTube okay so from there you can download all these notes okay and in last a mains practice question has also been given so guys now let's start with the <coughs> session for the today okay so now, first of all, let's take overview of newspaper so that we can understand that which articles are actually important for the today's session. So first article guys here, lack of consultation over setting up of inquiry panel upset protesting wrestlers. So guys, in the past few days, we have seen this particular thing that wrestlers, wrestling federation of India, okay, the players, wrestlers are protesting against the president of the wrestling wrestlers federation of india because it has been said that there is a sexual harassment of the players that have happened okay and for that particular thing an inquiry panel was constituted but the wrestlers say that they have not been consulted for constitution of that inquiry panel okay so therefore they are not happy with that thing okay then further moving on supreme court wrong in revealing sensitive reports rejiju Okay guys, so from past few days, every day we see that this particular article is coming in the newspaper where every day there is such kind of allegations are being made. In last, we'll see this particular article. Okay, then after that, moving on guys, uh, Air India fined again for two incidents. No need to go too much in these particular articles. And then in city section, we have all in the city section, we have the regional issues, etc. Okay, so moving on guys, again, the law and order related issues in regional sections have been given. Now here we can see one article, mass mortality of olive ridley turtles in Andhra Pradesh raises concerns. So we'll see this particular article with respect to the examination. Then again moving on, advertisements etc. has been given. And then we reach to the editorial section. Now the first editorial. The new and dark interpretation of we the people. We'll see this particular article with respect to the examination. Working hand in hand to showcase India. We'll see this particular article also with respect to the examination. Uh, tourism, uh, GS paper number three. A chance for peace. So guys, this particular article is talking about the recent interview that was given by the Pakistani Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif where he said that uh, Pakistan has learned its lesson, okay, and now they are willing to talk with India, but they want that the India first should restore the Article 370 in the Jammu and Kashmir, okay. So that particular statement is being discussed here. Fine, however, guys, that is unlikely because the Jammu and Kashmir is India's internal matter and we are sovereign to deal that matter in any way that we like. Quick exit, India needs to give quality exposure to its young hockey players, okay. Then further moving on, developing schools without barriers. So we'll see this particular article with respect to the examination. Okay, uh, the Sunni group in Kerala are coming together against the Mujahid movement. Now the article guys doesn't contain too much of substance with respect to the examination. Then in Tamil Nadu, share of women who eat green veggies declined drastically. Okay, so guys uh, in different different states, the percentage of women who eat green veggies have been given but you are not required to go and follow too much of this particular um, uh, this particular data as etc because the such state by state data you will not be able to remember by the time the exam will come then further moving on what ails the kane betwa river link project we'll see this particular article with respect to the examination then ayodhya city of paramount belief so guys this is a bibliography article a bibliography article okay so uh, talking about basically talking about that uh, how long before the Ramjan Bhim issue brought the place into the limelight fine so basically the article guys is not containing too much of substance with respect to the examination so it is a leisurely read if you want to read in leisure you can but for exam too much substance is not there in this article then further moving on India lost access to 26 of 65 petrol points now guys understand this thing that uh, 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 there might be the possibility that uh, on YouTube there will be standalone one hour video that will be made on this particular topic. 
but in this topic you are not going you are not required to see these 65 patrolling points that are there fine just in this topic there is one important keyword that we are going to discuss that is the salami slicing salami salami slicing tactic of china okay and we'll see that thing so only relevant substance which can be imported <coughs> <coughs> which can be important for exam <clears throat> that point only we need to see okay so guys if you are preparing seriously for this exam <clears throat> you need to know the difference as what is important for this examination okay then after that moving on india bags oscar nomination for original songs and two documentaries then polit uh, political articles have been given no need to go in these political articles okay then guys after that air india says action against pilot excessive so that mid air urination issue is being discussed no need to go no need to track that then after that what if risk of commercial release of gm mustard is reversible we'll see this particular article india pakistan came close to a nuclear war pompeo in his book okay so here we can see that former us secretary of state mike pompeo has basically written in his book however uh, when we talk about such books etc on these things questions usually don't come then further <clears throat> moving on imf confirms india's finance assurance for sri lanka we'll see this particular article then guys the top level officials in ukraine resign amid corruption no need to go in this particular article these are just the evolutionary details service exports to cross financial year 23 goal of 300 billion dollar goal so basically guys commerce minister had said this thing that merchandise exports okay the exports of india has rebounded back okay and even the service exports are also growing at a good rate but <laughs> again guys understand this particular thing no need to go too much and track that okay how much percentage of growth is there how much exports clogged between april and december okay so uh, point is that because guys these datas will change month by month okay then after that maruti's uh, net double to maruti's profits etc okay vistara to add seven no not no need to go in this particular article for the examination these are just the corporate trends and then we have the sports page so this is guys the overview of entire newspaper i hope that you have understood that what important articles are to be seen in this newspaper okay now let's discuss all these relevant articles one by one in the detail okay now moving on sorry yes now discussing the articles one by one so guys in every class we take a gs quotation we take a gs quotation and in uh, this quotation we try to see that how we can use it to complement our gs paper number 1 2 3 or 4 answers so today we are going to take quotation from mahatma gandhi father of the nation so gandhi ji says what is really needed to make democracy functional is not knowledge of fact but right education now what do we mean by right education right education means the education based on ethics education based on morals the ethic education which inculcates in us certain values which type of values particularly the most important values are values of empathy empathy values of compassion and values of justice seeking behavior values of justice seeking behavior fine so the education right education is the one which imparts us values imparts morals and ethics in us that type of education is important to make democracy functional because when this education will be there people will realize their duties people will go extra mile to perform their fundamental duties okay they'll understand the limits of their rights so this is guys all about the idea for today's gs quotation so i hope that you have understood it and now moving to first article first article okay so guys the first article that we are going to take will be important for our prelims examination prelims examination as well as gs paper number 3 environment ecology also the article will be important okay so first of all let's read the heading of article article reads mass mortality of olive ridley turtles in andhra pradesh raises concerns okay now basically guys what is happening now first of all before going in this particular article i would like to give you some background information and actually the background information and additional information that we are going to see in this article that is the only important information that you need for your examination in article actually much of substance has not been given i'll come on that in just one two minute now guys see this particular thing that here here 
we actually uh, here guys actually when we talk about the eastern coast of india particularly odisha and andhra pradesh odisha and andhra pradesh are the two regions where olive ridley turtles come in mass number for their nesting and largely they come to the state of odisha okay now when we talk about olive ridley turtles okay i'll come on that map in just one minute so when we talk about olive ridley turtle they are the smallest and most abundant of all the sea turtles largely they live in the sea but they come on beach to lay their eggs to lay their eggs okay so they are sea turtles which are very small in size and the name olive ridley turtle comes from the olive color shell which they bear now these olive ridley turtles they have been put in schedule 1 of the wildlife protection act it means that they cannot be hunted they enjoy the highest level of protection iucn red list they are classified as vulnerable because nowadays their population is going down and their population is threatened because of sea level pollution because of hunting <coughs> <coughs> because of hunting and in the sites they are okay uh, okay con con convention convention on international trade in endangered species in sites they come in appendix one it means that they cannot be traded freely between the countries their export and import cannot happen freely okay now what is the habitat where these olive ridley turtles are found so they are actually found in the warm waters they cannot survive in very cold water so they found they are found in pacific atlantic indian ocean and largely i told you that odisha is the preference where they come and they make the mass nesting sites so in odisha gahir matha marine sanctuary okay it is world's largest rookery what is a rookery rookery means a place rookery means a place where the animals come for breeding particularly turtles so this is the world's largest rookery of sea turtles okay so i will show that particular location now okay so guys actually when we talk about the olive ridley turtles large number of them come for mass nesting at three places in state of odisha that is this rishi kulya rishi kulya okay so here rishi kulya river is meeting is meeting the bay of bengal so rishi kulya then the next is now here you can see the relative locations also because guys on these relative locations north to south south to north also questions are asked so first of all mass nesting sites are number one rishi kulya second is the devi mouth okay devi and third is gahir matha gahir matha and gahir matha is the world's largest rookery largest site out of them okay so here they come now in some numbers they also come to andhra pradesh but largely it's odisha now guys what is this particular news all about so basically guys it has been found it has been found that in some of the in some of the uh, in some of the regions of andhra pradesh for example okay sakhintepalli okay malikupuram okay mamidi kuduru okay or alavaram now these are certain of the sites which have seen mass mortality of the turtles so basically what is happening in andhra pradesh ma, the basically turtles which have died they are awashed on the beach region now why their mass mortality why these many number of turtles have died in the sea and now they are coming on the andhra pradesh coast so basically the people have said this thing that from so many of the time there is the treated water okay so actually there are the oil exploration units by ongc ongc okay so oil exploration uh, fine units of ongc what they are doing they are treat they are leaving the water they are leaving the they are just just uh, they are just uh, leaving the uh, waste waste water in the ocean and because of this particular polluted water these olive ridley turtles have died and because they have died now they are coming on the sea coast of andhra pradesh so mass mortality of olive ridley turtle in andhra pradesh has raised concern and now people are reaching to the district administration that they need to ensure that industries they don't discharge their waste water in river or ongc okay or ongc they don't discharge their uh, waste water in the sea because it is impacting the olive ridley turtles so because of this they have been in news and when such kind of issue comes upsc usually also asks question about them in prelims examination 
ओके नाउ आई जस्ट वन मोर थिंग आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू अबाउट द ऑल इव रेडली टर्टल इट इज दैट फाइन सो दे आर वेरी फेमस फॉर अरिबदा नाउ वट इज द अरिबदा अरिबदा इज मास नेस्टिंग तो गाइज हेयर यू कैन सी दैट इन लार्ज नंबर दिज ऑल इव रेडली टर्टल्स विल कम ऑन बीच ओके एंड दे विल ले देयर एग्स इन लार्ज नंबर ओके सो दिस मास नेस्टिंग साइट्स ऑफ ऑल इव रेडली टर्टल्स दे आर कॉल्ड एज द अरिबदा ओके दिस इज समथिंग सो दे ले देयर एग्स ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ फाइव टू सेवन डेज इन कॉनिकल नेस्ट ओके एंड अबाउट वन एंड हाफ फीट डीप ओके दे विल ले देयर एग्स एंड देन दे विल कवर दोज एग्स विद द सैंड ओके विद देयर फ्लिपर्स विद देयर फ्लिपर्स ओके सो विद देयर फ्लिपर्स दे विल कवर दैट पर्टिकुलर एग्स विद द सैंड सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट गाइज द ऑलिव रेडली टर्टल दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द ऑलिव रेडली टर्टल ओके सो आई होप दैट यू हैव अंडरस्टूड इट ओके so guys one thing i just i am just telling you that beyond that beyond what we have discussed here nothing is more important in this particular article and this 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 particular article as such that had come in newspaper just two lines you need to see that because of pollution they are now dying mass mortality is happening beyond that no need to go so that is all about this particular article guys and now we'll move to next article okay fine so this is the next article that we are taking now this particular article guys we'll see with respect to again prelims examination because some science and tech related question can come on this article and secondly we'll see this particular article with respect to gs paper number 3 environment ecology we see this article with respect to the environment and ecology gs paper number 3 okay chalo let's see this particular article as what it is talking about so first of all <clears throat> let's read heading so what if what if risks of commercial release of gm mustard is irreversible supreme court asks government okay now before going in this particular article guys i am going to give you some of background information and actually telling you this background information is the only thing that you need to have for this particular article okay now first of all guys see this thing that what has happened few days back genetic engineering appraisal committee जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग एप्रेजल कमेटी विच इज अंडर द विच इज अंडर द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ विच इज अंडर द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एनवायरमेंट फॉरेस्ट एंड क्लाइमेट चेंज इट हैज अप्रूव्ड द एनवायरमेंटल रिलीज ऑफ डी एम एच इलेवन डी एम एच इलेवन वट इज डी एम एच इलेवन इट इज अ हाईब्रिड वेराइटी ऑफ मस्टर्ड क्रॉप ओके नाउ एज दिस हाइब्रिड वेराइटी ऑफ मस्टर्ड क्रॉप डी एम एच इलेवन हैज बीन अप्रूव्ड बाई जी ई ए सी मैनी ऑफ द एनवायरमेंटल एक्टिविस्ट दे हैव रीच द सुप्रीम कोर्ट एंड दीज एक्टिविस्ट दे आर आस्किंग दैट वाई द जी ई ए सी हैज अलाउड दिस धारा ओके दिस डी एम एच इलेवन और दिस वेराइटी ऑफ मस्टर्ड इट विल इम्पैक्ट एनवायरमेंट दे से दैट इट विल इम्पैक्ट एनवायरमेंट इट विल ऑल्सो इम्पैक्ट द हेल्थ ऑफ people so it should not have been done now this case is going on in supreme court okay so basically supreme court as this hearing was going on so as a part of this hearing supreme court has asked that if this commercial release of mustard okay if this release of mustard it causes some irreversible damage on people's health if it causes some irreversible damage on environment uh, what you will do so this is going on so guys understand this thing that as this particular case is going on in supreme court you are not required to track day to day argument that are being made ki aaj government ne kya kaha aaj supreme court ne kya kaha no but we need to know this controversy okay now before going on let's discuss about what is this uh, gm mustard okay what are the all issues related to it okay so yes so we have seen this thing that recently जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग एप्रेजल कमेटी फाइन हैड अलाउड द धारा मस्टर्ड हाइब्रिड डी एम एच इलेवन फाइन दे हैव गिवन द एनवायरमेंटल रिलीज नाउ सी दिस थिंग बेसिकली द डी एम एच इलेवन दैट इज द हाइब्रिड मस्टर्ड अर्लियर ऑल्सो इट वॉज क्लियर बाय जी ई ए सी इन टू थाउजेंड एंड सेवनटीन बट एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ अ टाइम पीपल अगेन स्टार्टेड टू प्रोटेस्ट अगेंस्ट दिस मस्टर्ड दिस दिस हाइब्रिड मस्टर्ड एंड देन वट है जी ई ए द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एनवायरमेंट इट पुटा वेट ऑन दैट इट रोल्ड इट बैक ओके इट रोल्ड इट बैक देन इट इट सेट दैट ओके वी विल टेक सम टाइम विल स्टडी दिस मैटर मोर सो फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड सेवन टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू दिस फीजिबिलिटी ऑफ मस्टर्ड वॉज टेस्टेड एंड नाउ वट हैड हैपेंड इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू अगेन जी ई ए सी हैज गिवन द अप्रूवल एंड नाउ अगेन पीपल आर ओपोजिंग इट पीपल आर क्रिटिसाइजिंग इट नैन लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड 
Now I have used a word that this is a hybrid mustard. This is a hybrid mustard. Guys, what do we understand by hybrid variety of crop? Okay, so understand this particular thing, guys. Let's see. See, <coughs> suppose there is a crop variety A, and let's say there is a crop variety B. Okay, so when there will be the different different varieties of crop, everyone will have its own features. Everyone will have its own traits. For example, A variety of crop. Let's say a variety of mustard. It gives high yield. It gives high yield. Okay, but at the same time, it is susceptible to climate. It is susceptible to climate change. If little bit change in moisture is there, it will die. If little bit, uh, if little bit uh, temperature increases or goes down, it will die. So it is very sensitive, susceptible to climate change, but high yielding. Let's say the B variety of the mustard is there. Now this B variety of mustard have its own features. For example, it it is hardy. It is hardy. Hardy means that it can withstand temperature changes. It will not be impacted if temperature changes, if moisture changes. It is hardy. Okay. But at the same time, its yield is low. But at the same time, its yield is low. Okay. So A has its own advantage. B has its own advantage. What we can do, guys? We can we can cross these two crops we can cross these two crops okay so basically what can happen what can happen these two crops can cross with it with each other and then a hybrid variety of crop hybrid variety of crop c can be retrieved now the c crop will have features of a also and will have features of b also for example it will be high yielding and at the same time it will be hardy okay so what happens for this particular thing such hybridization crossing of the different different uh, varieties of plants they are carried okay this is about it so if we read formally i have given you here in the notes also hybridization involves crossing two genetically dissimilar plant varieties that can even be from same species okay the first generation okay the next the first generation of spring the first generation of spring will have higher yield than what the parent plant have okay so this the third variety okay sorry minute what a beta minute so this offspring variety will have traits of both and will also be giving high yield so basically guys what we have done we have created the hybrid variety of almost all the crops okay so we have taken the best of the best traits and we have created such hybrid crops now when we talk about mustard in the case of mustard such a hybridization is not very easy there is our problem. Why? Because guys understand this thing that mustard is largely a self-pollinating plant. In mustard, they have both female and male reproductive organ. Female reproductive organ is called as a pistil. Female reproductive organ is called as a pistil. And male reproductive organ is called as a stamen. So mustard has both female and male reproductive organ. So therefore, the mustard plant will be self-pollinating self pollinating it will pollinate with itself so therefore guys so so therefore what happens developing the hybrid fine for mustard was a little bit difficult for cotton maize tomato it can be done it can be done through simple simple emasculation or but just by removal of the anthers it can be done but for mustard it was difficult so therefore guys when we talk about a dmh 11 it is a scientific achievement that has been achieved by india Okay, now we are talking about this hybrid variety of DMH11. So hybrid means that the two plants have crossed with each other. So what two plants got crossed? So here we see that Varuna, Varuna, which is which uh, Varuna, which is an uh, sorry Indian mustard variety, Indian mustard variety by the name of Varuna, Indian mustard variety by the name of Varuna. It had got crossed with. Eastern European variety of mustard that is early Hira 2. Early Hira 2. So when these two varieties got crossed, Varuna and early Hira 2, then DMH 11 was achieved. And this DMH 11, it has higher productivity. Okay, it has a 28% higher yield over the Varuna and it has been certified by Indian Council of Agricultural Research. Okay, this is something. Now, scientists, they are saying that this DMH-11 has a lot of advantages for India. It has a lot of advantages for India. Scientists are saying this thing. Let's see, today we are actually, we have become dependent on other countries for the edible oil. We are largely importing the edible oil. 
now in this capacity guys if we if we are able to grow more mustard okay more mustard then it will be able to help india to achieve its food security to achieve its food security now when we talk about mustard it is cultivated in around 6 to 7 million hectares of land and what type of crop mustard is this is also an important point with respect to the prelims examination it is largely grown as a rabi winter crop predominantly in rajasthan haryana punjab madhya pradesh clear but because we don't have a better yield because we don't have better yield what we are doing we are importing a lot of mustard 55 to 60 percent of edible oil requirement that we have we are not able to meet it at our own so we are importing from other countries so here if we replace if we replace the mustard okay this uh, haryana Pan uh, basically haryana punjab rajasthan madhya pradesh if we replace that traditional mustard with the dmh 11 we can increase our yield by 28 to 30 percent so our dependence on other countries will be reduced so scientists say that this is a good thing india should implement it okay this is something and when we talk about the productivity of our mustard it has become very stagnant so around just a minute around 1 to 1 1.3 tons hectare productivity is there from past two day to two decades but other countries such as canada china europe they are growing huge mustard per hectare per hectare or per acre of land because of the hybrid varieties okay so this is something that we should bring it but guys then there comes the criticism there comes a criticism of this particular hybrid mustard what are these criticism so basically guys the biggest criticism that is coming here is that this gm mustard dmh 11 that we have that we have developed it is herbicide tolerant plant herbicide tolerant plant okay now understand what is the meaning of this herbicide tolerant plant in very simple words okay so guys if you have ever been to an agricultural field or if you yourselves are the farmers or belong to the farmer family you know this thing that whenever a particular plant or a particular crop is sown in the field around that crop there are many weeds that grow many weeds that grow now these weeds are unwanted plants okay so suppose this is our crop this is our let's say mustard crop around the mustard crop these weeds will grow these are the unwanted plant and what they do they will take the they will take the nourish they, they, the, they will take the uh, nutrients they will take the nutrients from the soil which were meant for this plant and if they will take the nutrients what will happen the plant growth will not happen so what is done the people will be coming and they will be plucking these weeds unwanted plant from hand they will do that particular thing now it takes a lot of labor to pluck these weeds or one wanted plant from hand so what has been done so this uh, so actually guys you can spray certain chemicals you can spray certain chemicals on these particular weeds but the point is that if you can spray the chemicals on the weed just a minute you can spray the chemicals on this unwanted plant but if you do that the parent plant or the major crop such as mustard it will also be impacted negatively it might also die if you spray such kind of a harmful chemical on these these uh, unwanted plants so this is a problem now what has been done when we talk about this dmh 11 dmh 11 it has been made as a herbicide tolerant what it means herbicide means a chemical that will kill a particular kind of plant or a particular kind of a herb so you can spray chemicals on these unwanted plants they will die but this mustard will not get impacted it will not get impacted it has a immunity against that herbicide chemical herbicide chemical is chemical which kills these unwanted plant so it has immunity now it has been said that because these plants have been made as herbicide tolerant a particular bar gene a particular bar gene was introduced in dmh 11 which makes which makes this plant carcinogenic which makes this particular plant carcinogenic it means that there can be cancers if people consume the mustard oil which will be derived out of this crop so it is a killer technology it kills soils it kills microbes it kills pollinators okay it has been provided and it also causes cancer in humans so therefore activists are criticizing that we should not develop or we should not allow the cultivation commercial cultivation of this dmh 11 so therefore they have reached the supreme court and now the matter is going on okay so guys understand this thing if you know this entire background 
you are not even required to read beyond this heading. Because if you read heading, what is being said? What if risks of commercial release of GM mustard is irreversible? What if you cult if you brought this GM mustard, people consumed it and there were some health implications that happened? Okay, what if people developed cancer? Kya karoge aap? So Supreme Court is asking government what you will do. Now, are you required to go in this article now? No, not at all you are required because then because you will find the same thing only that what you are going to do, Supreme Court asks this thing, then they will tell that viewpoint. Okay, that which judge asked, for example, here, just I'll show you so that you are satisfied. What happens when the risk is irreversible? Justice B.B. Nagaratna accompanying Justice Dinesh Maheshwari asked Attorney General. Okay, fine. This is something that have been asked. Now, point is that ball by ball commentary is not required. But concept is very, very important. Very important. Even a question can be asked on the examination. Okay, so that is all about guys this particular article what you need to see. Okay, so always I say this particular thing in the sessions that you need to learn the art as you need to filter out the important information. Okay, and sometimes you need to make an extra effort to filter out that information that might not be given. Then you have to do it. But sometimes, fine. You just need to see the headings that will suffice that thing. Okay, now moving on. What ails? <clears throat> what ails the Kane Betwa River Link project? What ails the Kane Betwa River Link project? Okay, so guys, we'll see this particular article with respect to GS paper number three. GS paper number three: Environment versus development. Environment versus development issues. Number one. And number two, with respect to the prelims examination also, some information, some factual information we'll see. Prelims examination. Now, let's start with this particular article. Okay, first of all, guys, uh, can you confirm is the voice audible? <laughs> now, <coughs> moving on. Okay, so uh, before going in this particular article, I would like to show you some of basic information okay and then we will refer to this information again also when we'll discuss this article okay so here here guys you can see the map of Kane Betwa link project Kane Betwa link project okay so here guys in the south you can see the Kane river just a minute I will highlight it by using a highlighter so here in the south you can see the Kane river we have the Kane River here. Okay. Now, on the north, on the north, we have Betwa River. On the north, we have Betwa River. Okay. Betwa River is there and then there is the Kane River that we have. Okay, guys, understand this particular thing. That basically, Kane River, Kane River lies in Madhya Pradesh. Kane River lies in Madhya Pradesh. And when we talk about Betwa River, Betwa River lies largely in Uttar Pradesh. I'm using the word largely. So Kane River, so Kane River largely lies in Madhya Pradesh and Betwa River largely lies in Uttar Pradesh. Okay. Now the point is that when we talk about the regions of Uttar Pradesh, when we talk about the regions of Uttar Pradesh, particularly the Bundelkhand region of Uttar Pradesh, this region has water scarcity. Because of water scarcity, agriculture is not very much effective here. Because agriculture is not effective, people have a lot of poverty. Okay, large number of people are dependent on agriculture, but irrigation facilities are not developed. So how to reform that particular problem? How to reform that particular problem? So to reform it, government came out with the Kane Betwa River Linking Project. Kane Betwa River Linking Project and this Kane Betwa River Linking Project has been cleared by government also. It has been cleared by government also and guys if I give you an amount it is going to be around 44,605 crore rupees project but I have not given this information in the notes because not that much important for examination. You are not required to write such kind of information but Yes, I want to say it is a very big project, very big project. Now, first of all, guys, as this particular project has been approved by government, environmental activists are protesting this particular project. They say that as you will build this project, it will it will lead to a lot of environmental damage, a lot of environmental destruction. 
so for that thing again and again government convenes the committees okay and they discuss that okay how to carry forward this particular project so what happened recently recently the steering committee of kane betwa link project its third meeting was held and in this particular meeting in this particular meeting kane betwa river link projects steering committee it provided that this particular kane betwa linking project is a flagship project flagship project means one of the one of the most significant project of the national government and actually it is very much important crucial for the water for the water security as well as for the socio economic development of entire bundelkhand region okay so here we have the bundelkhand region so for the development of bundelkhand region it is very much important now if we talk little bit about this kane betwa river link project let's discuss some basic information for this project so this particular project was approved by the union cabinet in 2021 so in 2021 union cabinet approved this particular project okay and here an agreement has been signed between the union government madhya pradesh government okay in this national and madhya pradesh government has signed the agreement okay so that so that the kane river so that the kane river in the south can be linked with the betwa river just a minute let me erase it so you can see it more clearly okay so the project has been signed so that the kane river can be linked with the betwa river okay betwa river okay just a minute let me use a pen which is more visible so that kane river can be linked with the betwa river betwa river in uttar pradesh okay now basically what will be done guys okay for this particular project for this particular project there will be a dam that will be constructed there will be a dam that will be constructed on the kane river okay that is the dhudhan dam dhudhan dam so dhudhan dam will be developed on the kane river and from this particular dam the water will be diverted water will be diverted through a canal water will be diverted through a canal okay so water will be diverted through a canal so you can see this red color canal which is connecting both okay so i will just mark it also so this canal you can see it is marking is it it is connecting both the kane and the betwa river so you see this particular thing that as this particular canal is being proposed this canal will go through the tiger reserve will pass through the panna okay okay so this is the actually because of this particular thing the environmental activists are protesting so let's discuss that what are the environmental challenges because of this particular project so majorly the issue is because of this dhundan dam that will be constructed and because of this canal that will be constructed because of these two major things there are the problems okay now first of all guys what has happened the link will be in the form of a canal the link will be in the form of a canal that we have just discussed here okay it will uh, be fed by the new dhodhan dam on the kane so we have seen this dhodhan dam is here so the dhodhan dam on the river kane will feed this particular canal okay okay now this particular dam will be built in the panna tiger reserve it will be built in the panna tiger reserve okay moreover guys there is one more issue that's coming here see uh actually this project is not going to be just a river linking project it also will generate the hydro power 103 megawatt of hydroelectricity will also be generated by this particular project so it is going to be again important for the development of this entire region it is going to be important for the development of this entire region now there are issues that have come let's discuss these issues one by one the first issue that the people are criticizing is is that okay, that hydrologist the people who have knowledge about the water the availability of water in this region they say okay, that government plan is based on surplus and deficit model government think that there is a surplus water in kane and because there is surplus water in the kane that water can be transferred to the betwa river but government is wrong here government is wrong here because the point is that there is not actually the surplus in the kane river if you divert the water from kane river to the betwa river what will happen the panna tiger reserve their water will go down and then tigers will be thirsty tigers will not get water to drink so this is be this is a very big problem that they are saying 
ओके इट विल एंडेंजर द वाटर सिक्योरिटी ऑफ पन्ना इट विल एंडेंजर द वाटर सिक्योरिटी ऑफ पन्ना द नेक्स्ट इशू गाइज दैट कम्स हेयर इज दैट सी वी ऑलरेडी हैव वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट वी ऑलरेडी हैव वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट नाइनटीन एंड अंडर वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट नाइनटीन वी क्रिएट द प्रोटेक्टेड एरियाज सच एज नेशनल पार्क वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरीज and it has been provided that these protected areas will enjoy the highest level of protection fine it has been provided that any diversion or any stopping or any enhancement of the flow of water in or outside the wildlife sanctuary parks is a taboo taboo means it is not allowed it cannot be done unless unless doing so is deemed to be necessary to improve the better management of wildlife within a sanctuary or a national park it has been provided very clearly by the wildlife protection act 1972 that you cannot divert water from national park you cannot divert water from sanctuary if you have to divert it should only be done if it will improve the condition of wildlife uh, national park or wildlife sanctuary but here what is happening actually it is not going to improve the condition of the panna tiger reserve and there are other many national park and wildlife sanctuaries also in this region now guys basically what has happened what has happened in the case of panna tiger reserve in the case of panna tiger reserve a central empowered committee of supreme court has found that this diversion is not necessary to improve the wildlife of the park okay so panna tiger reserve that is here panna tiger reserve okay i will use a different yellow color so panna tiger reserve that is here it will get impacted okay this is something that is going on okay now this point we have already seen okay so i have written it two times by mistake the next issue that coming here is that basically uh, as the water will be diverted from kane river to betwa river okay so towards the downstream of the kane river there is also the kane ghadial sanctuary kane ghadial sanctuary now this kane ghadial sanctuary is the home of critically endangered gangetic ghadial okay so please remember the status as per iucn red list its status is critically endangered so it is a play it is a residence of the critically endangered gangetic ghadial now when the water will be diverted from kane towards the betwa what will happen the survival of the ghadial will come under threat this is something that is going to be problematic the next issue that is coming here is that guys even national green tribunal national green tribunal also has taken this particular matter and has not cleared this particular matter so national green tribunal has also not cleared moreover panna tiger reserve guys see this particular thing panna tiger reserve did not had a very good history in 2009 panna tiger reserve lost almost all its tigers because of the improper management of panna tiger reserve and then what happened again the tiger got re reintroduced in panna again tiger got reintroduced in panna okay and now panna is able to balance but again if you do such developmental activity around the panna tiger reserve that is building such a big project diversion of the water from uh, kane to betwa then again the panna's tigers might be threatened this is something that has been provided now when we talk about guys panna tiger reserve panna tiger reserve has has deep gorges okay so for example this is land okay so this is gorge kind of structure so it has deep gorges okay and in these gorges tigers actually live now basically it has been provided that uh, if the if 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 we want to go for this particular project now if you remember guys here i have told you that there will be a dam that will be constructed there will be a dam that will be constructed that is a dhodan dam okay dhodan dam will be constructed and in this particular dam the water of kane river will be stored just a minute in this particular dam the water of kane river will be stored and then that particular water will be transported to betwa through this canal that will be in between we have seen now as this particular region dhodan dam will be constructed what will happen the gorges gorges that we have in this region in panna okay here panna is also there so these gorges will be filled with water and then the tigers habitat will again get impacted okay tigers habitat will get impacted now government is saying that we are going to build develop a larger panna tiger landscape panna panna tiger landscape tiger landscape means a habitat that is suitable for the tigers population okay so they say this thing that we are going to have this panna tiger landscape but the point is that guys you are coming out with panna tiger landscape as a compensation because the land is being diverted dam is being built but 
even if that land is not diverted even if that project doesn't comes the tiger landscape has to be anyhow constructed by india why because guys see this thing that india had taken a target there is a global target to protect 30% of global terrestrial terrestrial and marine areas by 2030 okay now basically that tiger population is to be conserved and for that in cop15 cop15 on on uh, on the biodiversity convention conference of parties 15 on cbd convention of biodiversity we have taken the target that we are going to going we are we are going to go for the conservation projects so anyhow we have to do that particular thing moreover guys as we have discussed that the kane it is a non perennial river non perennial river this river is not fed by glaciers so in certain uh, seasons water will be very much low so how the kenwa will kane river will be able to meet the requirements of the bundelkhand region okay this is a very big issue so these are guys largely the problems that are there in this particular project and because of this the people are protesting it okay so that is all guys about this article i hope that you have understood it and now with uh, will be moving to the next article developing schools without barrier developing schools without barrier okay so guys this particular article is talking about uh, it it it's talking about ensuring inclusive education ensuring inclusive education now let's understand guys that what this particular article is actually talking about okay. now this article first of all will be important for gs paper number 2 जी एस पेपर नंबर टू सोशल जस्टिस सोशल जस्टिस एंड एजुकेशन एजुकेशन ओके तो मूविंग ऑन गाइज नाउ हेयर सी दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट वी हैव अ लॉट ऑफ पॉपुलेशन ऑफ चिल्ड्रन हु आर सफरिंग विद डिसेबिलिटीज विजुअल डिसेबिलिटी locomotor disability physical disability or any other type of cognitive disabilities many such type of disabilities are there with which people are suffering now here it has been provided guys that the children with the disabilities children with the disability they need a higher care they need a higher care okay they need a care to complete their basic education even they need a special care so that they are given uh, sorry they are given they are to be given higher care so that they can perform their basic Uh, so that they can do basic activities and even for education they have to be given some extra care when we talk about population of disabled people in india so around 1.7% of the total children in india they are facing physical uh, they are facing a kind of a disability so out of total children in india 1.7% of the children they are facing some kind of a disability and because they are disabled they often face many limitations they while they might not be able to get proper education there might be certain discriminations that will be there so they are always faced with physical institutional socio economic communication barriers at an early age okay now it has been provided that more than 70% okay more than 70% of the 5 70% of the 5 year old children who have disabilities they have never attended any educational institution so 1.7% 1.7% of total children are disabled and out of that 70% are not able to go to school because they face a lot of discriminations there they face a lot of discriminations there okay now first of all let's see the different different type of barriers different different type of limitations that these children face here so let's discuss about these barriers one by one so number 1 number 1 inaccessible school buses so guys if you have ever seen school buses they are very steep okay and climbing those school buses uh, deboarding boarding those school buses is not a very easy task for the children who are disabled then we see this particular thing that inaccessible facilities in school for example drinking water facilities canteen toilet they are not disabled friendly so this is a very big problem then third problem we find this particular thing that there is inappropriate infrastructure inappropriate infrastructure uncomfortable seating for the children who are disabled slippery floors okay low illumination children who have visual disabilities they will face a problem then misinformed attitude teachers parents staff they are not very much sensitive 
ओके दे आर नॉट एबल टू टेक द इमोशनल केयर ऑफ द चिल्ड्रन ओके देन लैक ऑफ टीचिंग एंड लर्निंग प्रैक्टिस दैट इंटीग्रेट इंक्लूसिव टेक्नोलॉजी डिजिटल इक्विपमेंट इट इज मिसिंग पर्टिकुलरली द चिल्ड्रन हु हैव द कॉगनेटिव डिसेबिलिटीज दे सफर इवन मोर ओके दो चिल्ड्रन सफर इवन मोर नो इन आर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एज वेल एज इन द लेजिस्लेटिव फ्रेम ऑफ इंडिया फ्रेमवर्क ऑफ इंडिया वी हैव मैनी ऑफ द प्रोविजन वी हैव मैनी ऑफ द प्रोविजन विच टॉक अबाउट विच टॉक अबाउट गिविंग स्पेशल केयर एंड स्पेशल अटेंशन टू दीज चिल्ड्रन पर्टिकुलरली हु आर डिसेबल्ड नो आई एम गोइंग टू गिव रेफरेंसेज ऑफ सर्टन आर्टिकल्स एंड सर्टन लॉज विच आर प्रिवेलिंग इन इंडिया नंबर वन वी हैव आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी वन ए ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन नो आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी वन ए ऑफ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इट टॉक्स अबाउट राइट ऑफ चिल्ड्रन फॉर फ्री एंड कंपल्सरी एजुकेशन एंड फॉर एग्जीक्यूटिंग द राइट ऑफ चिल्ड्रन फॉर एजुकेशन वी हैव इवन बॉट एन एक्ट टू कॉम्प्लीमेंट आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी वन ए दैट इज दैट इज आर टी ई राइट टू एजुकेशन एक्ट टू थाउजेंड एंड नाइन एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर एक्ट वेरी क्लियरली प्रोवाइड्स दैट एवरी चाइल्ड हैज टू बी गिवन फ्री एंड कंपल्सरी एजुकेशन तो इवन इफ दे आर डिसेबल्ड दे हैव टू बी गिवन फ्री एंड कंपल्सरी एजुकेशन then serv shiksha abhiyan is there serv shiksha abhiyan and under serv shiksha abhiyan very clearly zero rejection policy has been provided zero rejection policy it provides this particular thing that every child with the special needs is to be provided school admission is to be provided education and all the support that a child needs in school is to be provided that has been provided then after that india has also ratified united nation convention on the rights of person with disabilities and under this united nation convention on the rights of person with disabilities it has been very clearly provided that all the disabled people all the disabled people they will be provided all types of accessibility soft accessibility and physical accessibility physical accessibility means accessibility of public buildings public transportation they should be able to access that soft accessibility means accessibility of books libraries etc teaching study material etc now basically guys further moving on government is also moving forward with the idea of leaving no one behind leave no one behind now the leave no one behind it is very much important to achieve sustainable developmental goals fine which we have agreed to achieve in 2030 so there are 17 sustainable developmental goals that were adopted in 2015 by the countries okay these 17 goals have 169 targets and these goals they talk about all the socio economic developmental issues poverty reduction okay protection of environment and even it also talks about ensuring justice to the disabled people including children okay so we are going forward with leave no one behind where we want to build a inclusively development society okay and under leave no one behind project now leave no one behind project is by un habitat okay so here what we have done we have started two projects recently into the schools of the delhi two projects have been started in the schools of delhi in line with leaving no one behind and as per this particular program what is happening what is happening empathy building is going on 400 participants including children school faculty staff they were informed they were trained with respect to the different different type of disabilities that are there how the children who are facing disabilities how they are to be treated how they are to be provided all kind of a support such kind of a things have been provided okay this is something that has happened now guys apart from that what can be way forward apart from that what can be way forward so it has been provided that we need to work on a multi pronged participatory approach multi pronged participatory approach okay so we need to identify different different stakeholders okay for example for example we need to sensitize we need to bring programs for the children we need to sensitize sensitize the other children parents caregivers training trainers for upschooling of school faculty special educators are to be provided access is to be provided to them to up, up upgraded teaching toolkits teachers are to be provided upgrading teaching toolkits so that they can help the children who are disabled visually disabled children okay children having cognitive disabilities okay and there are five principles there are five principles that are to be followed whenever dealing with disabled children or people that is number 1 equitability usability durability affordability cultural adaptability and aesthetic appeal okay aesthetic appeal 
Now, these are the five principles that should be followed while dealing with the disabled children, disabled students as well as other people in general. So, that is all guys about this particular article. Fine. And now we'll move to next article. Uh, sir, what is the, uh, sir requesting you to plan a session for budget and economic survey once it is released. Oh, yes, Vidyashree will obviously will try to do that. Sir, what is the way forward for Kane Betwa project? How can we balance? And uh, there is one more doubt. So this is doubt from Lakshmi. One more doubt. Sir, how can we balance between environment and developmental activities? Because development is also important. Yes, see, the way forward of uh, this uh, last uh, article that we discussed, that is the Kane Betwa river Lakeing project. The way forward is only this, that we need to go for environmental impact assessment, social impact assessment before the project is approved. Development is important, but at the same time, environment can also not be ignored. So a balanced approach is needed where with minimal disruption, with minimal disruption and on the basis of scientific studies, scientific studies, any step is to be taken. Okay, so as here it has been provided that now hydrological studies are to be carried okay, that even if you construct that canal, is it going to be viable or not? Do uh, go and study the other countries, how they have dealt with that particular problem. Okay, so the best thing is to learn by the experiences of the other people. Fine. So we can go and we can study, we can see the case studies in other countries, we can carry scientific scientific uh, uh, inter we can we can carry some scientific studies on that thing and with taking all the stakeholders in confidence with minimal disruption this thing is to be taken up now moving to next article working hard in hand working sorry working hand in hand to showcase india now this particular article we'll see with respect to gs paper number three tourism now in gs paper number three we have sectors of indian economy and when we talk about Indian economy, tourism, tourism is a very important contributor in Indian economy. Okay. Tourism is a very important contributor in Indian economy. Now, guys, when we talk about tourism, when we talk about tourism, tourism always happens to be a low hanging fruit in India. Okay. We are, we have a lot of capabilities to leverage our tourism. For example, India can leverage medical tourism. Okay, when we talk about medical tourism, first of all, guys, we have state of the art allopathic treatment facilities. Okay, the allopathic treatment facilities, they are best amongst the entire Southeast Asia and even Asia and at the same time, very much affordable. So a traditional hip replacement surgery, what it will cost in USA, it will cost around one fifth or one tenth in India. Okay, so we have excellent allopathic medical facilities. Then apart from that, we also have the alternative medications. For example, Ayurveda, Yoga, Yunani, Siddha Homeopathy. You know, this also we have a very good expertise. So we can attract a large number of medical tourists. Then the next is spiritual tourism. Spiritual and cultural tourism. So India is always called as the spiritual capital, spiritual and cultural capital of the world. So large number of spiritual and cultural tourism can be attracted. And then thirdly is leisure tourism. Okay. Leisure tourism. So the beaches of Goa and other leisurely places. Okay. Fine. Leisure tourism can be attracted. Adventure tourism. Adventure tourism in Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh, etc. Fine. So such kind of tourism can be uh, leveraged in India. Now, basically why this article today has come because today is 25th January and on 25th January, we observe National Tourism Day. On 25th January, National Tourism Day is observed. Okay. Now, actually guys, the article is talking about this thing that what has happened recently, government has started to take tourism as a serious and an important contributor in Indian economy. And now guys, what has happened, government of India has changed its approach. That is whole of government approach, whole of government approach. Now you see this thing that earlier the tourism ministry were, was only supposed to be responsible for promotion of tourism in India. But now this whole of government approach is taken where all governments will promote tourism in their own capacity. So here it has been seen that 20 central government ministries are trying to promote tourism through different, different ways. Let's take these examples that how these 20 different ministries are promoting tourism. 
Now, first example, guys, you can see here that recently what had happened, Ministry of Tourism and Ministry of Home Affairs, they both convened National Conference of Tourist Police. National Conference on Tourist Police. Now, what is this National Conference on Tourist Police? Basically, here they have tried to develop tourist-specific policing. Now, see that many number of times when the tourists are coming in India, their very big concern is their safety, their safety. Many number of times the policemen, they are not sensitive to the they are not sensitive to the vulnerabilities of the tourist people. So basically, here the Ministry of Home Affairs and the Ministry of Tourism, it is a sensitizing police so that they can address the needs of the foreign and domestic tourist. Okay, so their need can be addressed. This is something. The next is that basically there is one more. The Ministry of Education has also started a program. Ministry of Education has started the Yuva Tourism Clubs. Ministry of Tourism has started the Yuva Tourism Clubs to nurture young ambassadors of Indian tourism. To nurture young ambassador of Indian tourism. Okay, the students, how they can promote brand India overseas. Okay. Then next we see this Ministry of Ports. Ministry of Ports. Now what is Ministry of Ports is doing? Ministry of Port is developing the state of the art infrastructure. For example, cruise tourism they are developing. So guys, recently... MV Ganga Vilas, Ganga Vilas, a cruise was launched, okay, fine, which will be, uh, uh, the, the, recently the cruise was launched, okay, Ganga Vilas. Now, these are the types of cruise infrastructure, okay, such kind of things that are being developed by Ministry of Ports. Then after that, Ministry of External Affairs, fine, uh, basically it is placing tourism officers, okay, in Indian missions, in Indian missions overseas, tourism officers, okay have been placed which will promote indian india's brand tourism then after that ministry of tourism it is also now it is ministry of tourism is also funding commercial flights in in association with the ministry of civil assist uh, civil aviation so guys you see this particular thing that for example kushinagar is there associated with the life of the buddha okay so these places destinations where earlier flight connectivity was not there so there the flight connectivity is being provided and to further promote tourism, to further promote tourism, we need to take even more efforts. And in this particular line, the draft National Tourism Policy 2022 has also been formulated. Draft National Tourism Policy 2022 has also been formulated. And this draft National Tourism Policy, it is again further leveraging on the idea of the whole of the government. Whole of the government. What it means? It means that all the different different government ministries should come together so that India can be made as a global tourist destination by 2047 when India will, will be celebrating 100 year anniversary of independence. This is something that has been provided. Now, the ideas that include under the draft tourism policy is that institutional structures, fine union government, state government, local government, should be doing partnership with each other as well as the partnership with the industry so that whole of the government whole of the government can promote india's tourism and now you see this particular thing for 2023 for 2023 we find this thing that india is also hosting the g20 presidency and as g20 presidency is being hosted many of the delegates are going to visit india and when they are coming to visit india the point is that they will visit different different locations and we need to give them such good quality of services when these G20 delegates will come in India that when they go back to their homes they themselves become ambassador they themselves become ambassador of Indian tourism okay so such is the focus and for this particular thing a minute so this is the focus and for this particular thing different different ministries different different governments are coming together this is something okay and also we are celebrating visit India and also we are celebrating visit india year 2023 where we'll promote tourism products tourism destinations okay all these particular things are there now you see this thing since historical times many of the tourists have visited india okay such as juan sang megasthenes marco polo fahin they have they have visited india and all of them have really liked the india's generous and warm hospitality Okay, so that is all about this particular article guys. Now moving to next article.
द न्यू एंड डार्क इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ वी द पीपल नाउ फ्रेंकली गाइज आर्टिकल इज नॉट दैट मच रेलिवेंट फॉर द एग्जामिनेशन वाई बिकॉज द आर्टिकल इज अगेन डिस्कसिंग दिस टसल गोइंग ऑन बिटवीन द जुडिशरी एंड एग्जीक्यूटिव सो एवरी डे वी डिस्कस दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल वेर वी हैव सीन दिस थिंग दैट वाइस प्रेजिडेंट रिसेंटली मेड सर्टन कमेंट्स अगेंस्ट द जुडिशरी एंड हैड सेट दैट द जुडिशरी हैज यूज द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर डॉक्टरीन टू ओवर पावर द गवर्नमेंट ओके टू डाइल्यूट द पार्लियामेंट्री सॉवरेनिटी नाउ द आर्टिकल इज डूइंग द एनालिसिस ऑफ दैट ओनली आई विल नॉट एडवाइज यू टू गो टू मच इन दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल बिकॉज इट हैज अ पॉलिटिकल अंडर टोन इट हैज अ पॉलिटिकल प्लेयर एंड सच काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स आर नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू पी एस सी एग्जामिनेशन सो द आर्टिकल इज सेंग दैट रिसेंटली द वाइस प्रेजिडेंट ही सेड दैट इन द प्रीम इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन वर्ड वी द पीपल वी द पीपल मीन्स members of parliament and state legislature we the people means the member of parliament and state legislature vice president said this thing that judiciary and the executive are just appointed okay and peep and the representatives of parliament mps and mlas they are directly elected so judiciary or the member of judiciary are appointed they are actually inferior compared to the mps and mlas it has been provided now guys the article is talking about this particular thing that Uh, it 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 has been provided uh, it it has been provided that vice president had suitably interpreted word we the people to mean mps and mlas but the article is saying that the constitution has not mentioned about that anywhere what article is saying article is simply saying this particular thing that when we read the constitution of india in the constitution of india we don't find any definition of people okay so this is something that has been provided so here legislature is being the sole representative representative of the people the citizens it is a misrepresentation it is a misrepresentation now further it has been provided that every democratic setup based is based on the separation of power separation of power is the foundation of any democratic society okay and if separation of power is not there no democratic society can survive is it clear or not now it has been provided that indian nation okay is being a subject to reeducation of what the essence of democracy is suitably government is trying to change the narrative suitably government is trying to change the narrative that has been provided now article becomes even more political it says that over the years government has tried to undermine the power of election commission independent investigating agencies civil services they are all being used abused by the government for their own benefit there is a war going on in the country between elected government in the state and the governor we have also recently seen that how in tamil nadu the dispute happened between the governor and the government of tamil nadu so the article is saying that deliberately the government is trying to abuse their power in their own hand so this idea is there now guys such kind of political commentary is not very much required for our upsc examination so though i have given you the entire summary of the article but i'll not advise you to go too much in detail in this particular thing okay now moving to next article india lost access to 26 of the 65 petrol points okay now guys for our gs paper number 2 we are going to discuss one keyword here that is a salami tactics that is salami strategy of china salami strategy of china s a l a m i now one thing guys i am giving you very clear disclaimer and i am giving you a very clear warning that please don't go and do phd on this particular article that okay which petroling point is located where and that thing no not at all important for example now let's discuss this article so basically guys here we see here we see the line of actual control between india and china now here we see that there is aksai chin okay and here we see this particular thing that line of actual control is passing somewhere from here now basically on the line of actual control there are the different different petroling points for example here you can see hot springs petroling point number 15 here you see galwan valley petroling point number 14 so we have different different petroling points okay different different petroling points okay where indian army indian security forces they used to go and they used to patrol these petroling points now what the article is saying article is saying that actually see there are 65 patrolling points there are 65 patrolling points starting from the karakoram pass to chumur now these 65 patrolling points were earlier patrolled but what has happened in the past past time particularly because of the chinese confrontation that has increased our indian security forces indian security forces they are 
they uh, they are not able to patrol all the 65 patrolling points and therefore we have lost our presence in 26 patrolling points out of 65 so out of 65 we have lost our presence in 26 because indian security forces were not able to patrol them now why we have lost them if we were just simply not able to visit them not able to patrol them it is guys because of the china's salami slicing strategy china's salami slicing strategy now what is this china's salami slicing strategy so basically guys okay these thin wafer like pieces of uh loaf of meat they are called as a salami slice salami slicing means cutting them in very thin pieces okay now what china guys actually does china follows this salami slicing strategy suppose this is the boundary suppose this is the boundary now china wants to uh, suppose this is the boundary suppose this is china this is india now china wants china wants that just a minute china wants that the china occupies this territory china occupies this particular territory right now this particular territory is of india right now this particular territory is of india and china wants to acquire it china will directly or at one go will not acquire this territory what china will do china inch by inch inch by inch china will move towards india and will inch by inch be acquiring this particular territory is it clear or not now actually guys what happened suppose there are the as we have discussed there are the 65 patrolling points suppose if we are not able to patrol any patrolling point let's say for two months two months then the china will come there and china will say that we are here from all the times from ancient times we are standing here they will say this particular thing so what they are doing inch by inch inch by inch they try to take the territory this is a salami slicing and because of this thing whenever our indian security forces are not able to visit a patrolling point china takes over that so here we see that the china takes inch by inch territory and then it puts it in their own basket in their own country they, they make it they try to make it as a part of their own so this is something that has been provided so the tactic of people people's liberation army of china to grab land inch by inch is known as salami slicing Okay, and therefore they have acquired the patrolling points in the past few months. So that is all guys about this particular article. Now we'll move to next article. IMF confirms India's finance assurance for Sri Lanka. Now guys, if you are following newspaper analysis regularly and I, uh, you should follow it. I'm not saying you should watch video. If you are not able to watch video, at least read the newspaper. Okay. So. Recently, guys, we have seen this thing that the Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka is facing economic crisis because Sri Lanka is facing economic crisis. Sri Lanka has reached the IMF, okay, International Monetary Fund, and Sri Lanka is asking assurance from IMF. Sri Lanka is asking the financial assistance from IMF, but IMF had put a condition on Sri Lanka that before we give money to you, you need to uh, you need to provide assurance from your three of the biggest creditors. Who are the three biggest creditors of Sri Lanka? China, Japan and India. China, Japan and India. So the China, Japan and India has to provide assurance to IMF that okay, yes, we are the guarantors. You can help Sri Lanka. So these three countries have to give. Recently, now guys all, I have covered this particular thing. I have covered the entire history of the India-Sri Lanka relations few days back. 13th amendment also we have discussed. So recently, Minister of External Affairs visited Sri Lanka. India's Minister of External Affairs, Mr. S. Jay Shankar, visited Sri Lanka and provided formal written guarantees to IMF on the behalf of Sri Lanka. For Sri Lanka, India had given that particular uh, assurance. And now IMF has confirmed that India's finance assurances have been received. Now China and Japan also have to give that assurance. And once China and Japan will give the assurance, Sri Lanka will get the financial assistance. So guys, this is, so this is the way as how India is fulfilling its neighborhood first policy. This is the way as how we are fulfilling our neighborhood first policy. Beyond that, in article, much substance has not been given and already we have discussed it multiple number of times. Now, Supreme Court wrong in revealing sensitive reports, Rijiju. Okay, so guys, I will not advise you to go in this particular article. Every day there is a fight going on between the government on one hand and Supreme Court on one hand. So what this particular issue is all about, just for the sake of your interest, I'm telling you for exam, not important. Okay, so therefore I will take it just one minute. So basically what happened, uh, 
सर्टेन जजेस वर टू बी अपॉइंटेड एट हाई कोर्ट सुप्रीम कोर्ट रिकमेंडेड द अपॉइंटमेंट ऑफ द हाई कोर्ट जजेस नेम एंड सेंड द प्रपोजल टू प्रेजिडेंट सेंड द प्रपोजल टू प्रेजिडेंट बट द प्रेजिडेंट डिड नॉट क्लियर दैट पर्टिकुलर प्रपोजल ओके नाउ सुप्रीम कोर्ट रिवील्ड दैट दे हैव नॉट क्लियर द प्रपोजल बिकॉज वन ऑफ अ जज इज गे बिकॉज वन ऑफ अ जज इज गे एंड सम ऑफ अद सॉरी नॉट जज एडवोकेट वन ऑफ द एडवोकेट हु वॉज सपोज और हु वॉज रिकमेंडेड टू बी द जज इन दिल्ली हाई कोर्ट ही इज गे एंड द अदर पीपल हुज नेम आर बींग प्रपोगेट हुज नेम आर बींग एडवोकेटेड हुज नेम आर बींग एडवोकेटेड वट हैपेंड दे ओपनली हैव दे ओपनली हैव द व्यूज अगेंस्ट द गवर्नमेंट दे ओपनली हैव द व्यूज अगेंस्ट दे हैव क्रिटिसाइज और दे हैव रिटर्न अ पोस्ट अगेंस्ट द गवर्नमेंट एट सम टाइम एंड सुप्रीम कोर्ट सेट दैट information bureau raw fine they have given this particular report so it was revealed now the government is saying that this is not good supreme court should not have given that this is the intelligence report because if intelligence report will be laid in public it is not good it will go against the uh, national interest or it goes against public order this is something that has happened okay now taking the mains practice question for today so question reads discuss the barriers which impede the participation of children with disabilities in accessing educational opportunities also suggest measures which can transform those barriers to accessibility this is going to be a gs paper number 2 social justice and education related question fine so that you can attempt it so that is all guys about it i hope that you have understood it and with this we come to an end to the today's session okay guys so 